Hi, you people from YouTube. I received a nice note from uh, David from Ireland, and uh, I appreciated that. He asked me questions about uh, the Japanese culture and so on, and maybe I, some of my comments now may uh, enlighten him on that score. In Japan, their new self-defense force could have no uh, prior military members of uh, any rank whatsoever in it. A lot of ex-generals and admirals were just gripping anxiously to get their uh, feet wet back in the military. And uh, this was not going to be allowed to ever happen again. So to, he to head up their new self-defense force, we had to have somebody with no military background whatsoever. And uh, in order to have someone who would be popularly accepted by Japanese public as a suitable uh, head of uh, the new self-defense force, we stole or borrowed Keizo Hayashi, Chamberlain of the Imperial Household, uh, from uh, the Emperor and, and uh, established him as the head of the new Self-Defense Force. And uh, that uh, was accepted in Japan. Uh, he uh, was a man of uh, high repute highly thought of because of his proximity to the Emperor and uh, uh, Chamberlain of the Imperial Household, uh, Keeper of the Bees as far as uh, administering all the public parks and forests and things like that, which in our country are administered by the, the uh, Secretary of the Interior in Japan. They are administered as possessions of the Crown. And uh, so therefore that worked very well. Okay, during my uh, second tour in uh, Japan, before I went back to bring my family over to join me, I was living as a bachelor, bachelor pro tem, at the Sano Hotel in Tokyo. And on that second tour, when I brought my family over, uh, we were established in a big three-story house. It was uh, it was quite a house. It had a big sunroom. Uh, we had playroom for the children, for the little kiddies. We had a 16-year-old girl that uh, would ride her and the little kids, uh, take care of, babysit them. Uh, uh, share their little experiences with them and uh, uh, that was uh, interesting both ways, both to the Japanese and, uh, and uh, to my children. One of mine went to a Japanese school. The servants in the household, Japanese servants, would walk him to the school and uh, <clears throat> when, uh, when the uh, school day was over, uh, one or more teachers would stand outside the gate and the children would bow to that teacher uh, as they came out of the gate and were uh, escorted home. Uh, my son didn't understand that procedure and he didn't want to bow. Uh, uh, so uh, I had a delegation visit me my wife, and uh, after going through the customary teas, serving and everything, and they got down to business and told us we had to, to teach our children some of these Japanese ways. And uh, uh, so we, we had a hard time with, uh, with the little lad, but uh, he finally, finally got the message.
Now, another experience, uh, typical of Japan, were the public baths. Men and women would uh, go into different, different uh, uh, rooms, men's rooms and ladies' rooms, to remove their clothing. And then they would all go into the common bath and uh, everybody, uh, the same, the, uh, everybody in the nude. And uh, this was, this took a little getting accustomed to. Now, normally in the Japanese culture, women are not included uh, with the men at the dining table. I remember one occasion uh, when uh, I was a guest in the home of uh, uh, Mr. Taji, the uh, uh, Namakawa's father-in-law, and uh, <coughs> uh, he and his son and Namakawa and I were around this table and no women included. But we cajoled them into bringing the women in, brought up more table space, and uh, you know, to them this was a lark. Uh, we enjoyed it, and I, I got the feeling that they enjoyed it too once we got into it. Now, uh, I'm uh, informed by Namakawa that I'm going to have to help with one of the courses of a meal we're going to have and uh, uh, that we will really look forward to that. And now, I had no idea what he was, what was going to unfold in that regard. Uh, so when they got to the point where uh, this start making the homemade ice cream, just like we do it, put the ice cream making stuff in the thing and ice on top, a little salt to make it uh, colder and uh, turn the handle and uh, uh, once in a while they'd let me turn the handle because they wanted me to tell them when I thought it was ready to put the, the flavoring in. Well, of course, I didn't know what they meant by put the flavoring in. Uh, so, in due course, I judiciously said I thought it was time to put the flavoring in. And uh, so they grabbed the ice out, took the top off, and uh, brought out a bowl of this pale green goop and poured it in there and uh, put the cover back on again ice back on top and started turning it again and uh, in due course uh, it, 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 it's uh, probably ready to serve now. So they opened it up again and they served some of uh, this uh, ice cream that had been made. It was green tea flavored with no sweetener of any kind, and to me it tasted like heck. But I ate some of it, uh, put a good face on it, even without any sweetener. And now I'll say uh, to David in Ireland, thank you for your questions and your comment, and uh, uh, I look forward to uh, either further comment from you or uh, maybe some additional questions to which I can provide answers in my next publication. Thank you, David.